every day in the newspaper or books or even on the internet you might come across certain figures or structures that represents data in a very attractive manner if you take a look at the picture on the screen you will find that some data has been represented in a pictorial manner for example if you consider this picture over here the data of how many people across europe usa and the rest of the world use different browsers of internet are given so as you can see google chrome has a very high usage as compared to internet explorer which has a relatively lower usage and so on for all the other browsers that is mozilla firefox safari and so on so this data that has been collected is not presented in the raw format or by simple numbers it is represented in the form of pictures so it is either represented in this form or even in this form and as you can see different data has been represented differently so why is this pictorial representation of data required this pictorial or graphical representation of data is required because of the following reasons let us find out what those reasons are firstly it is attractive and a very effective presentation of data because one look at the graph will tell you and you will be able to compare how much data has been collected for what particular source secondly graphical representation of data enhances our understanding as i said it is very to very easy to read data of a graph it is simple and compact in its presentation of data it does not take up a very large amount of space especially if you have huge data to compare and represent it creates an imprint on the mind for a longer time if data is given to you in numbers and in a jumbled format will it really make a lasting impression on your mind not really on the other hand if that data has been represented in a very aesthetic manner on a graph it will actually create an imprint on your mind which will stay for a long time and you will be able to remember that data graphical form makes it possible to easily draw visual impressions of data so if i have been given data about a particular region's usage of water for example simple number from house to house will not really give me anything it's going to be meaningless if there are so many houses to consider on the other hand if i represent this data in the form of a graph it will make it easier for me to draw certain conclusions and impressions of that particular data lastly it is useful in comparisons and predictions as we shall soon find out how so firstly we will discuss about a line graph a line graph is a kind of a graph which is used to represent data now over here we have been given a set of observations for a particular week that is the daily maximum temperature in a particular city has been given for a week so for monday it is 36 degrees celsius tuesday 38 degrees celsius wednesday 38 degrees celsius and so on and i have to plot this data on the graph that has been provided to me so let's see how i can do so firstly i take the days that is monday tuesday wednesday or the variate on the x axis and i take the values of this on the y axis so the temperature i am plotting on the y axis and the days i have taken on the x axis so now let us find out how we can plot this graph firstly we consider monday another thing to remember is that on the y axis the scale that has been taken has to remain constant so if i am considering a scale this is the origin that starts from 0 if i am considering a scale from 0 to 5 then 5 to 10 it has to remain constant throughout in gradual increases of 5 it should not be that first we take 0 to 5 then i take 5 to 12 and then 12 to 20 and so on so it has to have a gradual and constant increase 0 to 5 5 to 10 10 to 15 and so on so 
whatever is the scale that we're initially considering has to remain constant throughout. So now let us see how I can plot 36 degrees Celsius. That is the temperature for Monday. So for Monday, I plot 36 somewhere over here, which is just above 35. Similarly, for Tuesday, I plot 38, which will be just below 40. So it will be somewhere over here. For Wednesday, I again will plot 38 because the temperature remains the same. For Thursday, it is 35. So for Thursday, the temperature will be somewhere over here. For Friday, it is 37. So again, it will be somewhere just below 40. But it will be lower than 38. For Saturday, it is 40 degrees Celsius. So for Saturday, it will be directly coinciding with this point. And for Sunday, it is 42. So it will be just above 40. So for Sunday, it will be just above 40. So now I have obtained these individual points on the graph. Now in order to draw a line graph, these points will have to be joined by a straight line only. So two consecutive points have to be joined by a straight line. So if I continue doing this, I will get a straight line graph, which is known as the line graph. So this represents the temperature that has been obtained for a particular week, as you can see. So instead of going through the raw data that has been given to us, it is very easy to say on which day the temperature was higher and on which day the temperature was lower directly from the graph, which is a pictorial representation. So you can see how easy it is. Next, we consider the information that was given for one city has now been given for two cities. City A that has the same temperatures as before and a new city, city B, that is having a different set of temperatures. So now with the help of a line graph, we will actually be able to compare the temperatures of these two regions. So let us find out how. I showed you how to plot the temperature for region A or city A. In a similar manner, the temperatures for city B is also plotted. So for Monday, it has a temperature of 20. So I plot for Monday, temperature 20. For Tuesday, the temperature is 15. So for Tuesday, I plot 15. For Wednesday, the temperature is 18. So it will lie just below 20. So somewhere over here. And in a similar manner, I will plot the rest of the temperatures for region B, just like I did for region A. And I will get the graph as you can see on the board. So over here, a direct look at this graph will tell me how much the temperature of A is and how much the temperature of B is for a given week. So from the graph, rather than going through the original raw data, it will be very easy for me to say that region A has had a higher temperature throughout the week than region B. Over here, you might be wondering why a graph is required. Now, since we have been given information for just one week, you might think it is better to go through the raw data. Imagine what would happen if you have been given information for an entire year, that is 52 weeks. In that case, it would certainly be quite difficult to go through the raw data. So in these circumstances, graphs help us to represent and compare. So now consider another form of representation. I'm sure you must be familiar with the popular game show, Kaun Banega Kroorpati. Now in Kaun Banega Kroorpati, when a particular participant is facing difficulty in answering a particular question, he or she might use a particular lifeline. Now you must be aware of the lifeline that is known as the audience poll. The audience poll, if you have noticed, always comes in this particular format. Every question has four choices as answer and the audience tells the participant which answer might be correct. 
So they vote on the particular answer. And this is represented as a percentage. So if I consider this case, I can see that maximum people have voted for D. Such representation of data is known as bar graph. So this is known as a bar graph. A bar graph is very simple to construct. So over here, I have been given the population for five different metropolitan cities in the year 1981. And these figures and these figures are in lakhs. So for Bengaluru, the population in 1981 was 29 lakhs. For Chennai, it was 33 lakhs. For Delhi, Kolkata, and Mumbai, the population was 62, 90, and 99 lakhs, respectively. So this data I have to represent in the form of a bar graph. So it can be done very easily. Just like the previous case in the case of the line graph, here also I take these cities on the x-axis. So I've considered Bangalore, Chennai, Delhi, Kolkata, and Mumbai on the x-axis. And on the y-axis, I plot a scale for the population to be plotted. Again, it is very important to remember that this scale should remain constant. That is, it should have a constant increase, which is this case is 20. It should not be that in the first case it is 20, then becomes 25 and 30, and so on. So now let us see how we can plot the bar graph. So when I consider Bangalore, I can find that the population is, in 1981, was 29 lakhs. You will notice that the y-axis represents the population in lakhs. So for Bangalore, I will take 29 as a point that is just below the midpoint of 20 and 40. The midpoint of 20 and 40 will be 30. So this point should be just below that midpoint. So and at that point, I will draw a bar like this, as you can see. And this procedure is carried out for all the respective cities. For example, for Delhi, Delhi has a population, had a population of 62 lakhs in 1981. So 62 will lie just above 60. So at this point, I will draw a bar graph. So in this way, we draw respective bars for the respective cities, and we get a bar graph. Now, it is very important to remember two things. The first thing to remember is the spacing in between the respective bars should remain, between consecutive bars should remain constant. Now, although this does not have any physical significance, it actually makes the data being represented presentable. It makes it look presentable and not untidy or haphazard. So this spacing should be equal in order to make the data presented neat and aesthetic. Second thing that should be remembered is the width of each particular bar should remain constant throughout. This width that I'm marking in green should remain constant for each and every bar. Again, in this case, it will have no physical significance. However, it has some aesthetic significance. Obviously, you can imagine how untidy it would look that if I have a thicker bar over here and then an even thicker bar over here, but then I have three thin bars. So in that case, it would not be really presentable. Thus, I have equal thickness bars. Now, what we previously saw was a vertical bar graph. We can also represent the same data in the form of a horizontal bar graph. The only difference in a horizontal bar graph is that the cities are considered on what we call the y-axis over here now, and the value, that is, the population in lakhs is considered on the x-axis. So in a similar manner, we will plot the respective populations for the respective cities. So for example, for Calcutta, the population in 1981 was 90. So how will I plot this? 90 will be the midpoint of 80 and 100. Thus, at this particular point, the graph or the bar will be plotted. So in this manner, we can plot the respective bars for the respective cities. And we will get a horizontal bar graph. 
Now we come to the concept of a multiple bar graph. What happens in a multiple bar graph? Just like in the case of a multiple line graph, even in this case, we can compare two sets of data. So over here, I have been given the population of these five metropolitan cities for the year 1981, and then again for the year 1991. And I have to plot a bar graph for both these sets of data. So firstly, I use the blue bar to represent population for 1981. As you can see, blue represents population for 1981. And the red bars represent population for 1991. And these bars are plotted in exactly the similar manner as I described earlier. Now for each particular city, the two bars, that is one corresponding to 1981 and the other corresponding to 1991 will be adjacent to one another. This usually enhances our ability to interpret the data in a better manner. So in a similar manner, we plot the data for 1981 as well as 1991. So how will this multiple bar graph help us? For example, if we want to find out in which city the population increase has been very high in going from 1981 to 1991, we can see that there are two cities which have undergone so. For Delhi, the population increase has been quite high as well as for Mumbai, the increase in population has been quite high but not quite for Chennai, which has had a very, very low increase in population. So this is how a multiple bar graph helps us in comparing two sets of data that are interrelated. Now we have a combination of line and bar graph. So a line and bar graph combination is used to represent two different but somewhat interrelated data. What is that different but interrelated data? It is rainfall in centimeters and temperature in degrees Celsius. Now, these two quantities are obviously different in their own rights, but they are related. How? Because both these are used to depict the weather of a particular region. So in this case, I am using the bar graph to represent rainfall and the line graph to represent temperature in degrees Celsius. So on the y-axis on the left hand side, I have taken the rainfall in centimeters and with this as y-axis and the respective months on x-axis, I plot a bar graph. Remember that when I'm considering rainfall for the respective months, I will refer to the y-axis on the left hand side. Now, when I have to plot the temperature in degrees Celsius for the respective months, I will consider the y-axis on the right-hand side and then plot the line graph. So as you can see, two different but interrelated sets of data can be represented in the same graph in a very aesthetic manner if we use a combination of line and bar graph. So here we studied how graphs help us in comparing and representing data we studied about line graphs and multiple line graphs, which can help us compare data and represent data across two different sets of observations. We also studied about bar graphs, which can also be represented in the manner of horizontal bar graphs or vertical bar graphs. We also saw that multiple bar graphs or bar graphs drawn for two sets of data helps us compare those two sets or compare the observations of each data set. And lastly, we saw how a combination of line and bar graph helps us to plot two different but somewhat interrelated data in the same graph.